to the cloud. All right, here we are. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Evelyn Jerome Alexander with Magellan College Counseling, and I'm going to give three tips for parents um, when you are about to uh, walk with your child through the college search and application process. Um, and I will tell uh, those watching the recording what I told everyone who's with us live, which is if you hear this weird squeaky sounding noise in the background, that's Chloe. Um, she's my dog and I actually closed the door to my office before I sat down to um, to get this going and she literally just poked her nose through the door and said nope mom I'm gonna be on the webinar with you so um, if you hear a funny noise that's who that is all right so now I'm gonna share my screen with you where did it go I'm gonna share this presentation with you and I'm just gonna walk through it um, and hopefully give you three tips um, and uh, I told all the people that are on with me live, I'm just going to walk through this presentation, no questions, and then I'll stop the recording and I'll take questions live. Um, and of course, if you're watching the recording of this, feel free to ask questions on our Facebook page, on our website. We have a contact us um, a page on our website. So there's many ways to get a hold of us if you have any questions. We're always happy to help. Um, so here we go. This is a little bit about Magellan. We started in 2011, so we're actually, the class of 2021 is our 10th year. It's very exciting. Um, we have 12 counselors, eight in California and, um, sorry, seven in Los Angeles, one in Southern California and in the San Diego area, and then one in Chicago, one in Texas, one in Colorado. Um, and we do work with students all over the country because teenagers are fabulous. They do not care where you're sitting. Um, I always say, as long as I have 10 pennants on the wall behind me, that's my office. Um, so we do a lot of virtual advising. Um, all right, so let's get right into it. This is honestly a super, like conceivably the most important point. Know your EFC. So what does that mean? Your EFC is your expected family contribution. Um, it's a conversation that might be hard for you to have with your teenager, but you need to know how much you can afford and how much you're willing to afford um, for college. Uh, when I post the PowerPoint that I'm showing right now, um, all these links are live. And I think if I go to it right now, um, it will open. I have to make sure that I am, here we go, new share. So I want to share this. Um, it will take you to the College Board's EFC calculator. Um, and this will take you maybe 10 minutes to get through, and I highly, highly recommend that you do this. Um, what this does, what your expected is, is, let's go back here. All right, um, I'm hoping that you are back seeing my PowerPoint. Um, let me just make sure that you are, new share. Let's go back to this just to make sure. Okay, um, so the expected family contribution is a federal formula. It is a formula that the government came up with. I promise you, it's more than you think you are able to pay for college. I'm just telling you that now. Um, most of the time, people go through the EFC process um, and they are very surprised by what the formula thinks they can pay. Um, so because of that, need-based aid is based on this number, the EFC. Some colleges give need-based aid, some colleges give merit-based aid. Not all colleges give merit-based aid. So um, you need to know what you're willing to pay, what the formula says you can afford to pay, and if you um, want to pay less than that, um, then you need to be applying to schools that give merit-based aid. Like I said, not all colleges do. Um, we use collegedata.com for that information, who gives merit-based aid. Um, it'll also help you figure out to which students they give it. So think about it this way. Colleges that do give merit aid are going to give it to the kids at the top end of their pool, okay? Um, and um, what I just said for the last like three minutes, I have a 35 minute version of that on our website under financial aid. Um, it's actually a blog post called College Financial Aid. Um, and I go through this in a lot more extensive detail. It's really important that you do this and I'll tell you why. I don't want you to get to the end of your, your student's college application process, have them be admitted to some schools that don't give aid, meaning you're going to pay a boatload more for college than you want and you're willing to pay and then you have to have this very uncomfortable conversation with your child um, that goes something like this. Honey, you did everything we told you to do. You got into those tough and impressive colleges, but it's not worth it 
for us to pay that amount. And we'd rather have you go here where they're offering you a nice chunk of money. Um, so you're, you're perfectly welcome to have that conversation, but it's very difficult. And if I, if I have my choice, I'd rather you not have to have it. Um, so again, need-based financial aid is based on that number, your EFC. Anything above your EFC up to the college's cost is your gap, is your need. And the colleges may fill that need. Um, they may not. They may not fill all of it. But merit aid is a totally different topic. Again, not all colleges give it. Um, and the colleges that do give it to the kids at the top. Um, and we say this a lot about safe schools. You know, people sort of have, and I'll talk more about this in a minute, people have sort of a negative opinion of what we call safe schools or likely schools. But the truth is the safe schools are the schools where your child's scores and GPA are above the average of what they, what they generally admit, which means they really want your kid. And when I say they really want, I mean they want with money. They're going to scholarship them. So <laughs> safe schools are the ones that are most likely to give you money and you should love them for that. I'm not saying you need to have a list full of safe schools, but I am saying pick your safe schools in a smart way. In other words, make sure that they're schools where your child would actually be willing to go and, and happy there. And actually that leads me directly into the next of my top three tips, which is know the odds. Um, we're not there to scare you. We're not trying to scare you with the numbers. The numbers are what they are. And the way to get the best result for your child is to have a well-researched list that includes target and safe or likely, we call them likely schools. Um, if, you, if you spend a year or a year and a half um, sort of talk, 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 talking about Ivy's and UCLA and USC and you know, Michigan and Vandy or whatever, if you spend a year and a half talking about those schools, your child will think that you think that those schools are the only um, acceptable outcome. So that's going to ramp up the pressure and ramp up the anxiety on them. I'm just telling you, um, they may not come out and say this to you, but they're absorbing all of this information. So the way to get there is to not assume that if you haven't heard of it, it must be crappy, right? And so this link is literally my favorite link ever. Um, I'm going to click it and I'm going to Go back to sharing this with you. Let's see if I can do this. Um, go back to sharing my internet screen with you. So every year, Harvard Law School publishes a list of the undergraduate colleges from which their first year law students graduated. And I want you to look at this list because it has schools on it that you thought that smart kids don't go to, right? There's a whole bunch on here. Um, we don't know which campus this is. Um, but there's schools that you haven't heard of. There's schools that you just didn't think, you know, were, you know, but they are. Um, usually we get, yeah, look at this. I mean, this is a list of schools that, honestly, you know, I work with a lot of kids in California. A lot of um, California parents say, oh, you can't go there. Nobody's heard of that. Nobody's heard of this school, right? Does anyone know anything about this school? I know it because I'm a college counselor. It's in Michigan. It's a little tiny um, liberal arts college. Um, but, you know, when you put Michigan State on your list as a safety, because it probably is, um, just realize that you really can, your child really can get to Harvard Law School from there. And so it's, it's really important as you're, as you're going through this process to think about what you want the actual outcome to be. All right, I'm going back to my little slideshow. So here we go. Um, so I like that. I like that list, again, for two reasons. A, it's got a whole bunch of schools you've never heard of, and B, the ones you have heard of, you didn't think that you could get to Harvard Law School from there, but you can. Um, and so as you and your child are going through um, lists, please be aware that there's tons of opportunities out there. There's 2,200 four-year colleges. Um, and just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean somebody who might be the person hiring your child um, for their first or second job out of college hasn't heard of it. Um, the perfect example of this, um, my East Coast people will laugh at this, but uh, we had a, a family the other day, we mentioned Colgate University, which is in upstate New York. And uh, the mom said, no one's ever heard of that. Everyone thinks that's just a toothpaste. 
well, if you're on the East Coast, a lot of people have heard of Colgate University. It is a highly, highly respected liberal arts college, and, and it's actually quite hard to get into. So the lesson that we always take from this is just because your 17-year-old hasn't heard of it doesn't mean it's not good. Okay, so, um, and, and again, this is the, we get these, you know, we get this issue all the time. Why do I have to apply to safety schools? I've worked so hard. Um, and we tell people I've worked so hard is a phrase that we aren't allowed to use because what those very, very low numbers mean, um, you know, Harvard admits what, 5%, 6%, you know, all of the IVs are basically below 8%, right? Even even um, non-Ivy, highly selective schools are admitting 11, 12, 13, 14%. Some liberal arts colleges are admitting 13, 14%. Um, again, the numbers aren't to scare you. The numbers are real and, um, you know, 80, 90% of the kids who apply to those schools are qualified to go to those schools. The colleges have a choice to make and it's a hard choice. I don't want you to think that they do this lightly because um, we talk to them on a regular basis. It's a hard job what they're doing literally right now, January, February, March, as they, as they shape their class. But that's what they're doing. They're shaping their class and they have choices to make. And part of the um, you know, calculus that goes into their decisions is grades and test scores. A big part of the decision-making process is grades and test scores. But at the same time, they're also choosing um, to build a class with kids with different life experiences um, and who bring different things to the table. Um, my uh, good friend from college and I were just talking the other day about how we were both from California and we both went to a school on the East Coast. We were the diversity then. We were probably um, conceivably less competitive than some of our classmates, but we were from California, so that made us interesting. Unfortunately, California now graduates more high school seniors than any other state. Um, which is um, a problem in a couple different ways. A, it makes us less unique in the national um, pool of, uh, of college applications. And B, when you're looking, as many of the students we work with are, when you're looking to um, uh, go to a University of California, UC school, um, there's literally just more graduating high school seniors than there are seats in the freshman class across the entire UC and Cal State system. It's literally a capacity problem. Um, and so that's why we encourage so strongly, we encourage kids to look outside of California because like I said, 2,200 four-year colleges in the US, 10% of them are in California. So, you know, broaden your horizons a little bit. Um, make the list, we always say make the list bigger before you make it smaller. Um, everyone always comes to us and says, we need to narrow this list down and we look at the list and it doesn't, it has a lot of reaches on it. People come to us with a lot of reach schools, but not necessarily targets or likelies. And we say, let's make the list bigger before we make it smaller. That's really a smart way to go. All right, the last tip that I wanna talk about today, this is really, really hard for parents. I know that you have watched your child go from birth to 16 or 17. I know that they're your baby and your life's work and you in some ways define a part of your life by their success um, and of course their failures, but this is their process and it is really important that you let them take ownership of every step of the way to the extent that you've already done step one, um, the expected family contribution, and you've defined what the, what the financial parameters are. But again, um, going back to what I said about merit aid, I, I just want you to keep in mind that whatever the sticker price is, that's not always necessarily the actual price you're going to pay. So you need to sort of, my favorite word in this whole thing is triangulate. You need to triangulate what the sticker price is with whether or not they're a merit giving school. If they are, it's unlikely if your child is at the top of the pool that you're gonna end up paying sticker price. So if you've had that conversation and you're satisfied, um, you really need to let your student do the work here. So I've seen moms um, come out with this book. This is the FIST guide, it's this thick. There's over 400 colleges in it. And, and there's all these little sticky notes sticking out the front and sticking out the side. There's like 122 sticky notes because mom has previewed the book and has decided which colleges kiddo should be looking at. I want you to, tr to resist the temptation to do that. Resist the temptation to do that. Um, the other thing is I say in here that the student needs to be the one registering for college tours. I can't say this strongly enough. 
colleges do not want to talk to you right now. They want to talk to their applicant. Um, when you become their customer and you're paying the bill, they'll want to talk to you then. I'm not trying to be funny, but during the admission process, they're, they're judging whether or not your student is actively engaged in being the consumer here. Um, I talked to a dad today who was talking about going on college tours um, and he was, actually he was talking about high school tours. He was saying he was surprised that the student giving the tour is evaluating the students who are taking the tour and, and the um, student giving or the staff person giving the parents a tour was also evaluating the parents on what questions they asked and, and stuff like that. Um, and colleges are similar. If you make a phone call to an admission office on your child's behalf, if you identify yourself, they are going to note that in your child's file. And it's not a positive because we're talking about 17, 16, 17, sometimes 18 year olds. Colleges need to know that the student is really the one driving the process forward. So I could talk for a couple weeks about that, but, um, but I'll stop. So um, bottom line, the three tips are know what your EFC is, know that there's more out there than you think and be open to taking a look at what's out there and that means don't be scared by the numbers but understand that they are reality um, and um, and make sure that the, they're the ones driving the process it's really important that you do that um, your counselor at school might help you do that um, help you um, there's a lot of community-based organizations that help students stay organized through this process. Obviously, that's what we do, um, and we do focus on reducing everyone's stress. And I will tell you that, you know, a big chunk of the anxiety is caused by um, two things. A, they think they're not going to get in anywhere, and B, they think they're going to disappoint you. Um, and those are kind of big and heavy things. Um, and hard for a teenager to deal with. So if you think you need help with that, we can sometimes take a little bit of that anxiety away. Um, here's just a quick overview of what we do. Um, and I am really, um, uh, it's really important to me that I don't feel like I'm selling anyone anything. So I always say, um, we never chase people. If you feel like you need help, you come, you come call me. Um, people always know that they need us when they need us. So that's how you reach us. Um, we have a Facebook page called Magellan Counseling. I invite you to like it. We try to post stuff regularly. Um, we also have a blog on MagellanCounseling.com um, and we tweet occasionally too. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'm gonna escape out. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna escape out of this. And I'm gonna go back to, oh, I guess that's me again. So I'm gonna go back to the website. And I just want to show you MagellanCounseling.com. Um, this is our homepage. We've got a lot of stuff going on here on the contact us page. That's really the most important part. That's how you, um, that's how you tell us, hey, let me, um, let me sign up for your newsletter, or your text messaging service. And then if you have any information you want to give us, you want to do it right here. All right, I am going to turn off the recording. If you watch the recording on this and you have questions, please feel free. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna stop sharing now. Um, if you watch this on the recording, you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We're always happy to help. Um, I'm Evelyn Jerome Alexander with Magellan College Counseling. Thanks so much.